Good thing they so Alan, nice. yeah, how does it look a year later? <laughs> Completely different. I can't even remember what it looked like last time I was here. What did the boat look like 14 months ago? I, had the, I, think, it was, I think it was just the like, skeleton. Part. Yeah, I think so too. Last spring, it was hard to tell with all the bracing up, but once we finished the top side planking and the deck beams, she started to take shape. Yeah, I think I remember climbing up on top and being like, oh, it's actually looking like a bow, but it was still a skeleton. Yeah. It's invigorating having fresh eyes see Red Aviva and how much she's grown. All too often, we lose sight of how far we've come. Warning here. We change our minds often. Blame it on our youthful indecisiveness or fear of commitment. The interior ideas here are subject to change. In fact, uh, they already have. Yeah, be curtain you can pull and be a door or a curtain for the beavers up there. And so back this way. Oh, that's the Look at that monster. So this area will be the dinette. Um, we'll put another little bulkhead in here, and it'll come up and probably like wrap around like that. Okay. And so it'll be wrap around seating here. Oh. Okay. Um, and a big table. It was pretty accessible. And then opposite, <laughs> there'll be another little bulkhead here. Um, that'll kind of come up it's like that. Head, uh, sorry. Basically a wall, yeah, okay. like this. <laughs> so there'll be another wall right there, and uh -huh. there'll be a settee, which is basically just a couch. Okay. Um, and then back here will be a quarter berth. And uh, so back there in that corner, mm -hmm. um, up to the bulkhead that separates up the dinette, that'll be the yeah. galley. Okay. So galley being like the, the kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. Doing the interior is probably gonna be hella fun. So what oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll be a hatch. Oh my god. With a cannon. <laughs> it'll be what's called a butterfly hatch. Um, oh. So it'll all be glass actually, so it'll let a ton of air in, and then it'll have um, like two. It'll open up like that, okay. um, like butterfly wings. Yeah. And so it'll to let, let a lot of yeah, ventilation. Nice. Yeah. But I decided just to, instead of actually cutting it out, mm -hmm. um, to just build the the cabin top over it, so um, it'll be watertight um, for trucking and we oh, don't okay. have to worry about it. And cause I can just cut that and build the hatch at any point now. Are you gonna put uh, little windows in? But yeah, there's gonna oh, be right. ports going all the way along the cabin. Yes. Back here, there's gonna be big ones, probably like that big. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be two big ones okay. and then it'll transition okay. to like, yeah. Cool. Can you open the windows? Um, eventually, so them? all of this, um, it'll transition into smaller ones. That'll be probably about that big mm -hmm. uh, in front of the two big ones. And eventually those will all be opening ports. But the thing is, is opening ports are really expensive. So yeah. we're gonna pick out ones that we really like. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna cut holes to those dimensions. Okay. Um, but then we're just gonna through bolt plexiglass uh, from the outside okay. uh, until we can afford the hatches. <laughs> and then when we can afford them, we'll buy them and we'll just swap. Okay. Basically everything in here that you see that's plywood is gonna be paneled in cedar. Yeah. Uh, it'll be like this. Yeah. Uh, this is Port Orford cedar. Okay. And so all of these, are, like all the cabin walls, all the bulkheads, everything will be paneled in Western red cedar, which is this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be vertical. And it'll be all tongue and groove looking like rounded wow. edges like that. So sick. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it really well done. It's a pain in the ass, but yeah. 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 It's really cool. You don't think about it until like you actually start doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I started. I cut all these strips up. Um, I cut them in individual strips and then made it a uh, mold. Oh, I and then oh, okay. painted all the strips with epoxy and then clamped them down around the mold. So okay. the epoxy dry and then it holds the shape. Mm -hmm. I made a wooden spear one time. So nice. I see the, <laughs> the gaps in the wood here. Yep, Do that's, you fill those up before you um, go in the water, or you just let the water kind of seep in? Uh, both. Um, so yeah, everything you'll see all of the wood is shrinking out now since it's so hot and dry. Right. And um, so under the water, um, you just will go along and, and put a little like uh, 
you know, squeeze a little bit of putty, just tar, okay. just like this stuff. Okay. And it'll squeeze a little bit of tar in there, but that doesn't actually make it watertight. It'll still leak like crazy. Mm -hmm. It just kind of stems the flow a little bit. Got it. Um, but the real thing is, is the water just swallows yeah. the wood up. So um, when you do that, do you like kind of, do you let, do you just dump it in and it'll swell up or do you like kind of gradually put it in water? Yeah, you got a couple different options. It depends on where you're launching. Like some yards that are cool that have a lift, mm -hmm. they'll actually lower you down yeah, in the yeah, straps so and then they'll keep you in the straps. So you don't have to worry about training sitting. wheels. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, yeah, that's, that seems like the right way to do it. I mean, that, you yeah, know. but a lot of yards don't actually want to just leave their travel lift or something. So in case they need yeah. It yeah, so most of the time they just throw you in and you have to have pumps. <laughs> Like, oh, you have okay. to have a lot of pumps. So you're going to have some pumps ready? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Napa boat yard's good because we already launched a boat there that, that was mm -hmm. leaked like a month. Did it really? And, yeah. <laughs> but they have a bunch of pumps. They had like a Never couple of big 120 volt uh, electric can. pumps and a big ass gasoline pump. We had them all going full bore on that boat. Wow. <laughs> and the but, other one leaked because it was just out of the water for too long? Um, yeah, well it was planked in mahogany. It was old. It was an old wooden racing boat. So the planks and the frames were really thin. Mm -hmm. um, and she was planked in mahogany which is a really great wood, but it swells and shrinks a lot. Like it moves a lot. And so we were out for only a month, but it was during the summer. And so all the planking shrunk like crazy. Interesting. And so we launched it. There was seriously like springs of water shooting this oh, high. Yeah, just like the movies. And, and yeah, it was like, <laughs> it was rushing. Like we have videos of from like back in the stir, the water was literally like Oh, it was so crazy. After an hour. We had all the pumps going full bore and we were keeping up. We were pumping it out about as fast as it was coming in. Uh -huh. By the next day, she barely leaked a thing. That's good. Yeah, that okay. makes sense. Yeah, so it is crazy how it moves. With so much to look forward to, we were fit to muster up all the ambition we had left. The countdown had begun. Two and a half months left in the woods. Have you seen it up here yet? Uh, no, actually, it's my first time. Would you like to say a few words about the deck decision? I feel good about it. Because I still feel like the reason why the decision was made is a good one. This will get us sailing a hell of a lot faster. Absolutely. And there's no reason why down the line we can't cover it with wood if we feel like it. But so far, yeah. Feel good about it. Yeah. I think we're going to be stoked. And I can still, like, put a ton of wood trim everywhere, too. So, I mean, we're going to have wooden bulwarks big plank bulwarks. Those will look sexy. Those will just be finished foiled around all the cabin, you know, all the corners on the bottom along the top up there. I'm going to put wood trim. So there's going to be a lot of wood to look up at up here regardless. Master wood, sprit wood. Yeah, big rub rail. Yeah. And then I'll probably plank back here and burn the strips of wood well, glue them on. The objective is, like Garrett said, to go sailing. So for now, instead of planking the decks, which was the original idea, we're going to paint them. Just trying to even out some of the bottom planks that are sticking out a lot since we used bottom uh, planking stock from three different sources and each one is slightly different thicknesses. So yeah. You see like this planking came from one place, this came from another place. 
this one is like an eighth of an inch thicker than this one. So I'm just trying to uh, just knock down some of the thickness, at least on the edge. And now all of the bottom bungs are done. So before we start protecting the bottom, we'll go ahead and knock these down a little bit. But an ongoing task that finally ended today. That's yeah. exciting. Right. Two years of building this boat, now with the equivalent time in months, we needed all feet on deck. First task on the list are the bulwarks. Garrett measured the distance we wanted each of the posts to be at and drilled the hole through the deck. and we were lucky enough to have Garrett's brother Reed back. He was down below re-threading the stanchion bolts, which we had uh, previously coated in epoxy. High tech depth gauge. Voila. Voila. Then I delivered the finished posts up to Hoffa on deck. <laughs> I then worked up top sealing the base to the deck with a healthy portion of PLS 30. Papa stood underneath in the cabin to screw the washer and nut on. Yeah? We didn't tighten down all the way because next Garrett and Reed wrapped batten around all the posts to make sure they sat at the proper angle to the shear. Tighten. Huh? Tighten it, right? Yeah. Uh, tighten up the, the one that's all the way forward after you're done with that. Right. Then we tightened up all the bolts from underneath. Then we celebrated. We're so good. Well, I feel so good. Dude, you got some moves, man. So much grip. <laughs> Next up. The water line. I got two water line points from the plans, one at the bow and the other at her stern. We marked them on the hull and built slides out from those points. With a simple string, measured our water line. Oh, that's exactly 16 inches to the water line. <laughs> that's actually exactly where it should be. So we worked it this way. After Garrett marked it, I'd walk my end out as Reed moved his end in, until the string just barely kissed the hull. We'd do this every several inches so we could connect the dots, so to speak. 
funny with the line here. You can kind of see how much lower the boat's sitting on the bow. How angled she is. After tacking on a batten, Garrett used the hand saw to scribe the waterline. By carving the waterline into the hull, we'll never lose it, no matter how many years of paint pile up. There's something so mesmerizing about painting with a brush to me. Maybe it's the silence that captivates my mind, or the sound it makes coating the surface. Garrett, on the other hand, <laughs> is more of a roller kind of guy, so it worked out. He worked around me as I slowly caught up cutting in the waterline. The last addition to the hull before trucking was the rub rail. Garrett scarfed this near 40 foot long piece out of Port Orford. And get this, we found the cedar on Craigslist, over 800 linear feet left over from a deck remodel years ago in Vancouver. We took the lot walking away for what worked out to be like 87 cents a board foot. Just insane. <laughs> it looks really good too. Oh yeah. Pretty steamy and hot down here. Uh oh. You gotta actually right. pay attention when I'm telling you this. 
Oh, that's the hooker live well. Which is pretty interesting, I must say. What? Nice. Oh my god. Don't get my toes in there. Dozy dozies. Oh. <laughs> oh. You got to stick your stuff on your foot because you're stupid. 